We're looking at a portrait of Mrs. W. W. Carson, who we all recognize as the foundress of the Fort Concho Museum and Preservation Project. Uh, this portrait was done by the uh, commissioned by the Standard Times back in the 1950s. Uh, Mrs. Carson was a most amazing woman. Uh, born in 1872, in her 86 years, she uh, raised, I believe, seven children, ran for the state legislature, founded several businesses, did a lot of oil and title uh, work, uh, was a teacher and an educator, a tireless promoter of the city, was years ahead of her time in promoting and fighting for equal educational opportunities for Hispanic children, and perhaps to us at Fort Concho, most important of all, she was the lady who in the late 1920s decided the remaining buildings at the fort were important, merited saving, and she spent the last 26 years of her life in doing that. Uh, she was the board president for virtually all of the fort's early history as a museum from 1935 to her death in 1958. And we hope that our work here in the last 50 years since her death uh, meets with her approval because it was always her dream to see the fort fully restored and fully operational, uh, serving the citizens of the city, uh, the region, and the nation. A large plaque on the wall is the Fort Concho Memorial, and as it says, it is dedicated to those who gave their lives here in order to establish our nation. Uh, this covers all of the soldiers, the civilians, children, women, uh, Indian scouts, Native Americans, and unknowns who passed away during the fort's active years of 1867 to 1889. Uh, this was done as part of our uh, 75th anniversary uh, a few years ago as a museum. And it was rather sobering and impressive at the same time to pull together all of the names and all of the people. And there's a little plaque for each soldier and person with, if we know it, uh, the death date. Now, we sometimes forget in the study of history that it is indeed about people and people born, they have lives, sometimes good, sometimes hard, and eventually they pass on. And in many cases, some of these folks probably passed away, um, not uh, properly remembered um, by succeeding generations. So we put this together so that they would be remembered. Above the plaque is a very wonderful painting by an artist now deceased, Clyde Heron, of Odessa, Texas. The painting is of the 1874 raid by the 4th Cavalry under uh, Colonel Randall McKenzie uh, in Palo Duro Canyon. It's uh, deceivingly large. It's about six feet across and I believe three feet or so um, up and down. And it's one of his major works. He donated it to us about 10, 12 years ago, and it covers a very sharp moment in history when the 4th Cavalry charged into the uh, Native Americans' camp and by a surprise attack uh, defeated the warriors and for all intent and purposes secured peace on the North Texas uh, Plains. It's accurate in virtually every detail even to the point where he has painted in the puddles because there was a small shower the night before, and you can even see the reflection of the horse's legs in some of the puddles. He was a great artist and a great historian, and he spent all the extra time necessary to bring every detail uh, into his paintings. We have uh, several statues on display in our visitor center, and there are a pair here flanking the fireplace. Uh, by Eddie Dixon of Lubbock, who is a very well-known sculptor, best known for a lot of his Native American and Buffalo Soldier statues. Uh, Eddie was the uh, uh, creator of the very large Buffalo Soldier statue that was dedicated a few years ago at Fort Leavenworth, Kansas. These were done back in the 1980s uh, during the beginning of, of Eddie's career. Uh, the one we are focusing on now is called Dawn. It's a representation of one of the Seminole Negro scouts who were uh, active in South Texas and some of this region in the 1870s. And many of their descendants still live in the Fort Clark Brackettville area, uh, where many of their ancestors are buried in the nearby cemetery. 
Um, the Seminole Negro Scouts were uh, a group derived from the uh, intermarrying of the freed slaves uh, uh, here and the Seminole Indians who were moved west. And uh, as we said earlier, many of their descendants are still around in the uh, Brackettville area just a few hours south of San Angelo. The uh, second uh, Eddie Dixon sculptor is called Night Sounds. It's one of those frozen moments in time you can focus on the uh, Buffalo Soldier, I believe Corporal's face. He has pulled his pistol. He is in a crouch looking, peering into the darkness. He has heard something, perhaps nothing, not sure what it is, but he has his pistol drawn and he's ready to defend himself. Uh, Eddie's sculptures are always uh, good in detail and take that frozen moment in time. And this one's been on display here, I believe, since the early 1980s. Now, the Buffalo Soldiers were an integral part of Fort Concho. They were uh, posted in one form or another, cavalry and infantry, at the fort from 1869 to 1885. And over the 22-year run of our post, they represented 50% of the active duty strength. One of the more impressive aspects uh, of the fort is its officer's row. Uh, in historic times, there were nine officer's quarters uh, designed over a 12-year period from the eight, late 1860s to the late 1870s, early 80s. Uh, you'll, they're pretty much all built of the same style of materials, uh, limestone rock as the base and uh, whatever wood was available for the <coughs> porches and the roof lines. Over the years, the Army built these in, in several different fashions. They were designed to house one or two or three families, or in the case of the large number seven, a duplex, uh, it would hold uh, more than a few single officers. Every one of these buildings was thoroughly changed by civilian occupancy from the close of the fort in 1889 to recent years, and it's been a nine-decade effort to purchase the building and the land around it, to raise the funds, to research, and to accurately restore it to its period appearance. But right now, they all stand stately and in a row, looking very similar to the way they were back a century plus ago. We are in uh, the officers' quarters number three at Fort Concho, and we're particularly in the room that is laid out to show the life of an unmarried junior officer. Uh, quarters for officers in the Army then and now were assigned according to rank, and in the Army of the 1870s it was done by rooms. So if you were a junior lieutenant from West Point, you got one room. Didn't matter if you had a family, didn't matter if you needed more rooms. Uh, Army didn't, in those days, ask you to have a family or children, so you got what you were assigned. This room is laid out to show a, a lieutenant fresh from West Point or maybe with a few years of service under his belt. His clothing and furniture would be a uh, simple combination of some army issue things like the bunk and the field box, and another combination of things he could pull together from other soldiers and officers on post. Some condemned army blankets make for a simple floor covering. He may, would have some uh, decorations and souvenirs on the wall, maybe a framed poster of a Civil War or a Mexican War battle. And otherwise, it was Spartan and, and just sort of your bachelor pad, so to speak, of the day. He would probably not do much cooking or eating here. He would probably eat meals next door with a more senior officer, such as a captain, whose quarters we will visit in just a moment.